Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to be looking at this uh, computer that I just literally unboxed a few minutes ago. I've had several of these over the years, but I regrettably have sold them all over the years. This is a Gateway 2000 4DX266. This is a uh, one of my favorite form factors of... Uh, Gateway 2000 computers, um, my second favorite right next to the uh, great big uh, towers, of course, like my aunt has. This one uh, is actually local to me. Um, I bought it off eBay, but it was from Greensboro, so it only had a few miles to travel here, so that makes things kind of interesting. I've uh, been after a gateway like this again for a long time now, uh, ever since I saw one at a friend's house uh, a while back, and it got me wanting another one. And another reason I wanted this is because it is a 486 base system, uh, a 486DX266 to be precise. At, prior to getting this, I did not have any uh, 486 systems, unfortunately. I had gotten rid of them all. But now, uh, with this one, I once again have one. So, I'm excited to once again be able to use a 486. Now, this one uh, is missing the hard drive. It never had a CD-ROM drive or sound card, so this has never had any uh, multimedia capabilities whatsoever. So, this pretty much tells me that it was used for uh, business purposes only. And we'll uh, turn it around. And we can get a good look at the back. Uh, now right here we've only got one expansion card and that is a ISA Ethernet card. I remember seeing in the uh, pictures on eBay. I did not recognize the brand. So, uh, I don't know if I'll be keeping it in there or not. Um, depends on if I can find drivers or not. And of course, in true Gateway fashion, they give us the exact manufacturing date. This one was manufactured February 14th of 1995, so it just turned 28 years old. So it's pretty late for a 486, but they were still making them in the Pentium era. There is a little bit of rust on the back of here, especially on the screws, but I can just replace those, I suppose. So let's go ahead and uh, open it up and see what we're going to be dealing with. So thankfully, it'll st it still unscrews just fine. Again, I doubt I'll be keeping these screws. They're awful uh, rusty. Yeah. That's nasty looking. So let me uh, get this one here. And true gateway fashion, they use way more, way too many screws than necessary to uh, secure the cover. And. Uh, According to the eBay listing from the pictures I've seen, it does uh, power on and does do a power on self-test, so at least we have that. Has 32 megs of video, me uh, not video memory, of uh, memory, regular memory. Obviously been upgraded. I think these originally came with like maybe 8 megs, maybe 16 on the higher end. Remember, these were customizable from the factory, I believe. Okay. And I think the hard drive size varied. Uh, the one that I had prior to this one that was a 486 like this, uh, the one I used the most, had a uh, 540 meg hard drive. Uh, okay, it's what's this? Uh, it's on here awful tight. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, 
All right. Okay, gonna go handheld for this portion just to make things a little bit easier. Um, here's our network card I was mentioning earlier. Interesting shape there, actually. Um, kind of looks like a real tech logo there, but I can't say for sure. Some kind of SMC chip, because I can put in the numbers on uh, Google and see if I can get some more precise information. This has a Cirrus Logic uh, video card built in, a GD5430. Uh, a lot of Packard Bells use that, actually. And just like Packard Bell, this is a uh, LPX motherboard. And uh, what makes this stand out from other 486s is the fact that this has some PCI slots on it which is really, really nice. Yeah, caps look good, I think. Uh, of course, I even put the manufacturing date on the motherboard. There's our uh, one and only uh, drive in here. And there obviously was a hard drive in here at some point, but that has been removed by the uh, seller for security purposes. And there's our Socket 3 486. If I can find one, I may do some uh, Intel Overdrive experiments with this. I don't know for sure. And I was expecting this, but I wasn't looking forward to it. Let me see if I can get my light on. This is one of the menaces of vintage computer collecting. Yes, that's right, folks. This is a Dallas uh, clock chip. In most cases, these are very hard to replace. They're uh, soldered directly into the motherboard. They are a pain in the neck to uh, replace. Unlike a uh, standard CR2032 CMOS battery. But, um, once it's kind of pushed up against this uh, floppy and hard drive cage, so I doubt it's socketed, but we will check and see if it is. If, it's, if it is socketed, that, that would make me the happiest person on earth. <laughs> So uh, why don't we uh, why don't we find out together on camera? Okay, uh, it's been a while since I've taken apart one of these. I do know we gotta take this screw out. By the way, I will not be adding a hard drive to this computer. Instead, I uh, assuming it'll work, I'm gonna opt for a uh, compact flash adapter. Just to make life a little bit easier, again, my apologies to the purists out there. That's just my preferred method these days. Okay, it came out pretty simple. Okay. Is this socketed? It's hard to tell. You know what? I think it might be, actually. Wouldn't that be something? Now, me without a chip puller. Let me see if I can find something to pry it off with. So I do know for a fact that the battery is dead. But the good news is um, it's not dead to a point where the computer won't boot into an OS. We can still do that as far as I know. So until I can get a replacement for this, we should still be able to uh, use this computer like normal. We'll just have to set the date and time and everything uh, each time we use it.
Hmm. I figure out the best way to do this. Okay. Thing is coming out. Yes. <laughs> this is a miracle, folks. This is a miracle. You rarely, rarely see these socketed. So, I will be able to replace this with no problem. They've got replacement uh, chips you can buy, I believe, from the UK. Or you can use a standard coin cell battery. So, <laughs> oh, I'll put it back in here for now, even though it's dead. Just so I don't lose it. But you don't realize how happy that makes me because my soldering skills are, well, obviously, put it bluntly, non-existent. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. Right, let's get this uh, floppy drive back in. Hopefully, uh, floppy drive still works because I don't know if I have any spares at the moment. Okay, I'm dropping screws now. So let's uh, get this screw back in. I'll do that off camera. Okay, I guess what we need to do now is uh, give it a power test. Okay, you got the surge protector on. All right, folks, moment of truth. Hmm. Oh, here we go. I'm not a very patient person, am I? <laughs> okay, system battery is dead. We already knew that. Has built in plug and play. That's nice. Well, um, I don't have a hard drive or CF card, I should say, in here at the moment, so I shall uh, go ahead and test the one drive that we do have with a uh, boot disk, if I can find a uh, suitable one. Okay. MS DOS 622. I do hope this drive works because I don't know if I have a replacement at the moment. <laughs> hmm, it's like it's seeing uh, two uh, hard drives that don't exist in here. Uh, it's peculiar. And it's locked up, so maybe we need to adjust our BIOS settings. Okay, yep. Hmm. Last I checked, it is not the year 5519, and it's not the 98th month and the uh, equal day. Even though it's not going to save it, I'll go ahead and put in uh, current date and time, which is 8.27 uh, p.m. And military time, that is... Uh... Okay, actually, first we'll put in the date, February... Uh, 20, <laughs> getting used to these, uh, controls, February 24th, 2023, it's a much more normal date, okay, now it's 8.28 p.m., 
Okay, I don't think it should be doing that. It's... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Again, I gotta be more patient, folks. Hmm. Not seeing any, uh... Drives on here. But, I suppose... We'll go ahead and save the changes and maybe we'll get a better result this time. Okay, it's trying to boot from the floppy. But it doesn't sound too promising. It's hardly making any noise. We should have gotten... Oh, here we go. Can I, I be more patient, folks? These are all computers. Again, we won't be able to set up MS-DOS. We don't have a drive in here. Yep, I knew that. But this will give us an opportunity to do a DIR on here and see if it can... So we just check the health of it. So yeah, I think we've uh, got a working floppy drive. That's good. So far, I am... Very pleasantly surprised with this computer. Um, everything is just working as it should. And so I guess what we need to do now is, as the old folks said back in the early to mid 90s, give this computer a multimedia upgrade. Okay, I think we're about ready to uh, get our parts installed. Let's just... Uh... Unplug everything first, of course. Okay, come on. There we go. And just an overview of the parts that we're going to put in. We have a CF card adapter with a 2 gig CF card. We have a Creative Lab Sound Blaster sound card, plug and play. This technically has a all 64 compatibility on here, but I tried this on a uh, Pentium 2 system a few months ago when I got this, and whenever I'd play uh, anything software wavetable based or anything that uses the uh, the all uh, capabilities, all I got was a bunch of horrible static. So I don't know if that part of this card still works or not, but the uh, FM synthesis part does still work, so we're good enough for that and this isn't exactly era appropriate but we have a uh, really nice uh, beige LG sound card from G not sound card CD-ROM drive it's had a long day folks from July 2000 not sure what speed it is but it is uh, way faster than this computer really needs <laughs> but it'll do the job and CD-ROM speed, I could care less about, as long as it's at least quad speed. So, um, and I have taken the network card out temporarily. Okay, where to begin? Well, I guess the, uh, uh, compact flash card would be a good place to start. I guess we take this, uh, piece off right here. Actually, let's turn the computer around. Alright, so I can get a better look at it. Well, that wasn't bright of me. <laughs> okay. I'll 
put it in this top slot. And first we'll uh, use this uh, floppy drive style cable. Thankfully this, ha this computer, unlike Packard Bells, I hate to say, has two floppy drive style connectors, so we don't need an adapter for this. Connect that up. And there's already a uh, hard drive cable in here ready to go. So we'll uh, go ahead and connect that up. There we go. tucked away a little bit the best I can. Okay. And we'll go ahead and proceed to put this little uh, piece back on to secure it with. A little too dark here to properly see. It has to line up uh, in a rather particular way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put our network card back in here. I discovered it's, it is indeed an SMC card. I forget the exact model number, but I did manage to find it on Driver Guide via the uh, FCC ID that it included. But I'd rather have the sound card up here. So I'm going to put the network card on the bottom. You can do it. Oof. Uh, okay, I think I just barely got that uh, network card in there. Now for the uh, sound card, something this computer has probably been dying for for 28 years now. Oh, that was satisfying. <laughs> now where did I put the screw for the slot at? Here we go, I think this is it. go and we'll plug the CD audio cable up for when we get the CD drive in which we shall go ahead and do let's see if I remember how this uh, goes in I think we do have to take the uh, front face plate off. Would like to find one of those combo drives that has the uh, three and a half inch uh, floppy and uh, five and a quarter inch floppy all in one unit that these gateways came with. 
but those are very hard to find. And the, and the other gateway I had just like this um, that I regrettably sold, I uh, had one of those drives in it. It worked great and it was really cool. come off. Hmm. Thought it would. Okay, maybe pull from the bottom. Oops. Oh, there. Missed a screw here, looks like. These things happen. I've done dumber things. Hmm, feels like there might be a uh, screw under the hard drive cage. Which is annoying. What are you going to do? Yep, I was right. There's a little bit of dust in here that needs to be cleaned out. There we go. And we will be gentle with this. Almost forgot we need to take our, uh, I said I was going to be gentle with it, but that was a promise I did not keep. <laughs> so we'll take this, uh, top blanking plate out. Oh, there's a metal thing there. I always say this is not a how-to. This is just a video you guys can watch and laugh at. <laughs> now I need to find some screws actually. Hang on. Okay, it's a bit of a mess right now, but I want to test everything before I Put it all back together so uh, here we go and still powers on at least come on you can do it there we go not out of the woods yet though not by a long shot I don't know if we'll need to do a uh, bio setup or not. We'll just wing it right now and oh yeah, that don't look right. I'm afraid until I get a replacement real-time clock battery, which I have ordered, we're gonna have to go into the BIOS and uh configure everything each time we turn this computer on 
before we can actually boot into an OS. All right, we got the uh, um, CF card detected properly. That's kind of real of a relief. Don't know if it's picking up the CD-ROM drive or not. Sometimes, even though it says none, it still sees it. Okay, it, CD-ROM uh, opens and closes just fine. I do have an OS installed on the CF card already from uh, Packard Bell, so if it starts booting, then we'll know we're good to go as far as that's concerned. Operating system not found, really. Well, there is an OS on here. Let's just boot from this DOS disk and see what we get. disk and see what's going on. Oh. That don't look normal. That shouldn't have disappeared. Okay, NumLock and Caps Lock are still registering though. Hmm. Control delete works. I was wondering when things would uh, start messing up for us. <laughs> it was inevitable. It's really crying for that new uh, clock battery. I think that's when it will truly be uh, happy. Let's see if it crashes again. Yep, just lost it again. Don't know what is going on here. Wonder if we unplug the CD ROM drive. I knew I should have done these upgrades one at a time. But I got too ambitious. go. wonder if the date's throwing everything off. I wouldn't think so, but okay, it's 946, so 21, 46, 02, 24, 
I mean, worst case scenario, I could put a hard drive in here. Not ideal for me, but if it gets it to work, then so be it. Okay. Okay, it's not detecting the hard drive though. Hmm. I don't know if there's supposed to be lights on that CF card or not. That will work. Let's just try F disk. Yeah, no fixed disk presence. That's that shouldn't be the case. Of course, then again, I have had issues with this CF card in the past. It's a little bit picky. Try that. Maybe it'll work. <laughs> Who knows? And who knows it? Might just need that new battery for it to work properly. Some computers are like that. If that's the case, then we'll probably have to shelve this computer for a few days. And there it is, it's seeing the drive, the proper size and everything. Okay, is it going to see the drive? Is it going to see the drive? Nope. Uh, okay, this is starting to get a little annoying. Let me just try a different CF card and see if that makes a difference. Okay, we're back with that crazy date. Don't know if that was causing our issues or not. I'm just gonna give it midnight. <laughs> Okay, let's see if... we get any further with this. This time I'll just eject the disk, the floppy disk, and see if it'll just boot as is. Something's still not right then. Huh. 
Okay, I've hooked up a uh, 850 megabyte Connor uh, peripherals hard drive, and we're going to see if we get any uh, further than we did with a CF card. I would be really disappointed if I can't use a CF card in here. Okay, we're getting that error again. Which is just leading me to believe that we may possibly have to replace that Dallas clock chip before we can uh, properly use this system. Because I've seen this before. Yep, same thing with a hard drive, so it's not CF card related. Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to have to shell this computer for a few days and uh, wait for that replacement clock chip uh, thing to uh, arrive. So, I um, guess that's it for now. Um, we'll... It'll take a few days for me, but it'll take just a matter of seconds for you guys. So through the magic of video editing, um, let's get it installed. Oh, what an adventure this has been. And it's not one that I wanted to go on. <laughs> it has uh, actually been about six days since the last part of this video was filmed. Uh, in fact, I had to do another video uh for uh, last week, which was yesterday uh, to me, for uh, to fill the gap about that uh, compact LTE CD-ROM drive, just so I could have a video out that week. But um, the replacement Dallas clock chip thing that I had ordered for here, it came uh, the other day. Here it is. Looks uh, looks legit. Looks normal. But, when I took it out of the box, and took it out of its wrapping, these three pins, two here and one on the other side, came off. If the camera will focus, that will be great. There we go. Yeah, they came clear off. And obviously, um, for this to work, you need all the pins uh, on there. So, thankfully, the uh, eBay seller was very uh, friendly and uh, understanding and sent me my uh, money back, which I used to uh, get this instead. This is from a uh, place called Necroware. And... Uh, this is the how it's going to go into the computer, that's so why I'm showing it. This one actually uses a CR220 uh, tw uh, uh, battery. Almost, uh, well, maybe not quite that small, but almost the size of a hearing aid battery. And uh, ha even has all the uh, necessary components on the back. Here we go. And, uh, most importantly, all the pins are in place. Okay, we're going to carefully install this, uh, replacement chip.
Okay, I think it's in there. Uh, at least I hope so. Uh, it's kind of awkward putting it in there, but let's go ahead and hook the computer up and see if this works. Okay, fingers crossed everyone. I've been through enough of this mess. I want this to work. Okay, BGA signal, that's good. Floppy drive seek, that's good. Okay, we're not getting the system clock error anymore, but it does want us to go into setup. So I think we may have uh, fixed our issue, <laughs> which would be fantastic. Even though I think it may have froze now. Huh. Again, I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> okay, that's a, much, that's a much more reasonable reasonable date. Uh, I know 1988 doesn't seem that reasonable nowadays, but it's better than like the year 5000 what's whatever <laughs> that we were getting earlier. So, yeah, this computer is starting to seem a lot more happier. Okay, it is 7... It is 7.23 p.m. And it is uh, March the uh, 3rd. Oh, March. The uh, 2nd, I mean, of 2023. All right. So hard drive, we'll pick up the CD drive this time. Nope. But again, uh, a lot of times that doesn't really mean much. And I'm curious to see if this will uh, boot from the uh, CF card now. I did lower the RAM down to 16 megs just because it's 486. Uh, 32 is just a little overkill. Yes! Yes, it is booting into uh, MS DOS uh, from a. Uh, this is from a Packard Bell of mine, but <sighs> we'll pick up the CD ROM drive. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Now it's obviously not going to uh, boot into Windows since this is from a Packard Bell install, which hmm, maybe it will. Maybe the video driver's uh, close enough. It is a Sears Logic. Yeah, I think it locked up, but hey, you know what? That's uh, that's okay. That's okay, because we're not going to keep this install anyway. Oh, this makes me so happy. All right, we're booted into um, MS-DOS 6.22 setup, and we have no uh, hard drive error this time, but we will exit out of here, though, because I want to uh, run FDisk and delete the partition that's already on here. It's actually not Windows 95. Uh, those Packard Bell boot disks like the label is Windows 95. And we'll create a new partition. And we'll reboot. I haven't uh, put the computer back together just yet, the cover that is, because um, I know as soon as I do, something's going to go wrong. <laughs> Alright, now we'll go through setup, uh, continue and replace your current version. We'll format. I don't know how long.
long this will take. Hopefully not too long since it's a CF card. Yeah, it'll only take about a minute or so. Alright, settings look correct to me. And I'll uh, let Dolls do its installation and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, we're all installed. So let's do the first official boot up. Alright, here we are. Now, next thing we're going to do, um, assuming I can find the right disc, <laughs> so I don't know where I put it, I'm not a very organized person, um, we're going to uh, install the uh, supplemental tools for uh, DOS 622. Okay, I found it. Just give us, gives us some added features like a uh, DOS shell. Can't remember if it was set up or in install. Guess we'll find out. Okay, got it right. And we'll install all components. Alright, we have a uh, VGA card, not a quick card. <laughs> Alright, and uh, that's them installed. Okay, I'm going to copy a couple of uh, important DROS drivers over, uh, namely the uh, CD-ROM driver and the mouse driver. So we'll uh, make a directory called uh, Drivers, and that's the appropriate name. <laughs> and I got a boot disk here for, for uh, Packard Bells that has a uh, a mouse driver and a CD-ROM driver that I like to use in DOS, so we'll copy a colon slash nec ide dot sys and we'll copy uh, I think it's uh, mouse dot com All right, take the disk back out, and we'll uh, edit our config sys. A lot of this stuff we'll uh, adjust later for better uh, memory compatibility. But we'll go ahead and add our uh, CD-ROM driver here. Save that and head to our auto exec. Okay, uh, I believe that's over here for our mouse and for our. We also got to add something for the CD ROM. The Microsoft CD-ROM extensions, or as a lot of people like to call it, as is myself, Messy Dex. And we'll reboot and hope that everything works.
All right. I think we're uh, good to go. Uh, let me find a uh, CD with the Windows 3.1 install files. Um, I usually use a Packard Bell Master CD for this. Um, hey, you know, Packard Bells and Gateway 2000s, there's nothing wrong with them living in harmony together, you know? I don't consider them rivals. I consider them good friends. So I think Packard Bell will have no issue using their CD for this. And it'll also uh, tell us if the CD-ROM drive is working properly. For installing Windows 3.1, I usually like to make a folder on the hard drive called WinDRBS um, for to hold all the installation files. That's what uh, OEMs used to do. I believe it's D colon slash uh, install slash windows. Would help if I put the copy command in there. <laughs> Remember, this is not a how-to video, folks. Okay, that tells us that the CD-ROM drive is fully functional. Way too fast for a 486, but you know what? When it comes to CD-ROM drives, as long as they're the uh, matching color to the computer and they don't look too obnoxious, I'm okay. I'm not all that worried about era-appropriate speeds. Alright, we're copied over, so I'll go ahead and take the CD out. Just so it doesn't confuse Windows setup. Alright, of course we'll do a custom install. Everything looks good. This will also tell us if the mouse is working, and it is. Whoop. And this was a completely different time for Microsoft because notice how it asks for a product number. Well, if you leave it blank, it doesn't care. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, it looks like it actually picked up the uh, network card. That is intriguing, huh? Well, if that's the case, then we can go ahead and see if we can uh, install TCP IP while we're uh, here. That would be nice. Again, where's my disk for it? <laughs> I just made a uh, floppy disk with what I think are the drivers for uh, this network card. But of course, there was no guarantee that it was going to work or not. Okay. Add protocol. Okay, we'll set that as uh, default. We'll get net rid of net buoy and IPX. Enable automatic DHCP. Set up. Okay, file sharing's already set up. Hmm. This may or may not work because I don't think this is a plug and play card apparently.
If I can't get this card to work, it's no big deal. I've got other uh, network cards that'll work in here. Skip the tutorial and restart. Yeah, I have no clue what the IRQ and stuff like that is for this uh, network card. In anticipation, I did go ahead and plug the Ethernet cable up. Just in case we do get life out of it. Okay, let's boot into Windows. See if that network card works. I don't have high hopes though, but <laughs> sometimes these things will surprise you. Sometimes pleasantly, sometimes unpleasantly. It's taken a while to boot. Uh, we're unable to obtain an IP address. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, hey, at least Windows is working. That's good news. <laughs> Maybe if uh, I were to go in and change the uh, IRQ setting on here. Okay. Being used by another card. Okay, we'll use seven. It seems to uh, like that one. <laughs> Who knows, maybe this was the trick, cause uh, I didn't want to use IRQ5, that's what the sound card uses. Sound card sometimes uses IRQ7, but I always prefer IRQ5, just for that little extra kick of compatibility. Okay, let's see if that took care of it. If not, I'll just find another network card to use. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, really. I do like to have uh, network cards in these old computers just to access my server where I have installation files and other goodies for these old machines. Makes life a little bit easier for me and that's always good. Now this has taken a while again so I'm a little bit skeptical if this uh, fixed it or not.
Yep, not happy. Maybe I can try that other uh, driver I found. Okay, it's actually been another day. And I've uh, finally sorted the network card issue out just by uh, giving up and <laughs> stealing a uh, PCI 3COM network card out of a other computer that I'm not using. And stuck it in here and surprise, surprise, it works beautifully. 3COM, 3COM cards, ISA and PCI, those older ones, they work on everything. You can always depend on them. For uh, reference, this was the card that we were trying to get to work, which um, I'm not going to get rid of. I might be able to get it going someday, maybe in a newer system with uh, better driver support, maybe like in Windows 95 or something. But anyway, um, we do have network connectivity. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is I got a system CD from Gateway 2000 that should have... Uh, some software and drivers for this system. So let's uh, first start with uh, the video driver, which is Cirrus Logic. Even has an OS2 driver on here if we ever want to put OS2 on here. Hopefully this will work. I don't see why it wouldn't. I believe this is a Cirrus Logic 5430. It's in this system. Pretty uh, standard uh, fare for the day. Probably one megabyte of video memory. Okay, we'll put that in uh, main. Okay, and I believe it's a 1572 uh, DG that we have. We'll set that to 256 colors. We'll keep it at 640 by 480. And we'll reboot, uh, presumably. And let's see if we get some uh, higher color. Or if it will even work. <laughs> Guess this is the right driver. Okay. Probably should have made it a lower refresh rate, though, for uh, filming purposes. Yep. We got light blue title bars, so... That means video card is properly working. But I'll go ahead and change the refresh rate to uh, 60, just temporarily, for you guys' uh, sake. Let's see, anything else uh, that we can install from here and we'll install video for Windows this basically updates uh, the media player program that comes with uh, Windows 3.1X.
We'll restart later. Let's see what else is on this CD that we can uh, put on here. Uh, oh yeah, MS Input. In other words, this is Microsoft IntelliPoint. Also a folder here for the Gateway 2000 AnyKey keyboard, which I would love to find someday, but they have gotten so expensive, it's <sighs> very annoying. And we'll skip the DOS stuff since we've already got a uh, DOS driver installed for the mouse. I don't want to conflict and make our lives more miserable than they should be. You realize it's now, as of the time I'm recording this, it's been a week since I got this computer and it's just now functioning properly. Um, only thing we have to do ne after this, I believe, is uh, install the sound card drivers. Now, as you remember, we put a uh, AWE64 in here, but a few months ago when I got this card, when I tried it in uh, another computer of mine, uh, everything worked except for the AWE and software synthesis stuff. Uh, whenever I'd play a MIDI file, um, in AWE mode, I guess you could call it, all, all I would get would be uh, a horrible screeching sound. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if it was because it was a, I don't, know if, I don't know if it was the computer or because I was running Windows 98, but we're going to see if it performs a little bit uh, better with uh, this Gateway 2000 with Windows 3.1. So let's go ahead and see if we can find that driver. This is on my uh, server. Yeah, everything's... <laughs> nothing's in the 8.2 character form, so we're just going to have to uh, guess and hope for the best. Hmm... Okay, I just copied it to another directory on my uh, server with a more uh, reasonable name. And there it is. Uh, of course, this is a DOS program. I don't have DOS drivers installed for this uh, network card, so we'll just have to uh, copy this over to the C drive. And once that's done, we'll uh, drop down to DOS and get it installed. Alright, copied over. Let's head down to uh, DOS mode. Don't know if we need the uh, Creative Control Manager or not, but we'll, uh, we shall find out. It does have some kind of plug and play thing in the BIOS that comes up. I don't know if that counts or not. Uh, okay, apparently we do need a CTCM. Let's 
Okay, that must have done something. Something good, I hope. <laughs> Now we'll get to installing the uh, sound card. Okay, it picked it up just fine. All right, let's reboot and see what kind of damage we caused. Okay, there's our plug and play manager. That probably needs to load after high mem though. I might have to adjust the configuration there, probably off camera. Okay, I heard the speaker pop. Let's head into Windows and give it a test run. And if the AWE part of it doesn't work, we'll just not use it. Alrighty. By that I mean uh, if the AWE portion doesn't work, we'll keep the sound card in here, but just not use the uh, AWE portion of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me check our MIDI mapper, see what it's uh, set to. Okay, let's, I think that's the AWE portion. Let's see if we uh, have our ears blown out. Actually, we did nothing at all. Which leads me to suspect that the uh, <laughs> AWE functionality is uh, just not possible on here. Let's change it to extended MIDI. That should switch it to FM synthesis ad lib style uh, sound. Which from what I remember on this card did work on the other computer. No. Well, that's a bit concerning. Most definitely. Okay, wave uh, sound works on it. And try all MIDI. Nothing. That's just unacceptable. Yeah, the uh, MIDI volume is turned up, turned up pretty well. I 
but one more try. <sighs> this is... <laughs> This has been so crazy of an adventure. Just when you think things are over, something else uh, decides to rear its ugly head. Give this one more shot. Complete silence. Okay, let's just run the creative diagnostics. get MIDI. And we get AWE uh, with <laughs> FM synthesis. So I'm sort of wonder if I did the wrong driver. Okay, it's actually been another day. Um, it has now been eight days since I got this computer, and it's just now uh, at a point where I can actually have fun with it. Um, last time we saw it, we were trying to get the sound card set up, and uh, I just could not get that sound card to work properly, uh, no matter what, with anything. Uh, it was just very glitchy, so I... Uh, didn't like to do this. I stole the uh, Sound Blaster 16 out of my uh, Tower uh, Gateway 2000, the P590. Um, I'll get another one for it uh, soon. And I put it in here, and after reinstalling Windows like five times, uh, I finally got the sound card working properly. So, uh, We'll open up accessories. By the way, further proof that the uh, Dallas clock chip replacement's working. And we will uh, give ourselves a canyon test.
That, my friends, is the song of a successful computer upgrade and restoration. Okay, now that we've um, got everything completed, I think it's time we christen this computer with some uh, Geekenspiel stickers. Um, this guy, I've uh, talked about him on the channel before. He makes these wonderful uh, retro computer stickers for uh, old computers like this. And uh, last year, he uh, came up with a redesign of the... Uh, Gateway 2000 family PC logo that some of these gateways used to have, and we'll put that on there. As you can probably tell, this computer has been missing its uh, classic Intel inside sticker, so I ordered one of those from him, and he sent me a bonus uh, old-fashioned looking uh, clear design for Microsoft Windows sticker which um, we'll find a place to put on here for it. Okay, I found a picture online of a uh, gateway similar to this with um, its original sticker still intact, so I've got that up on my uh, main computer here, so I'm going to use it as a reference. We'll start with the uh, Intel inside sticker. This is the uh, 486... Uh, style one and it goes uh, right there oh that looks good and the uh, gateway 2000 family PC uh, sticker which I got two of them I got one for my uh, gateway 2000 tower as well this one goes a little bit to the left of the floppy drive, kind of in the middle between the uh, floppy drive and reset button. So I am going to uh, see how that looks. Oh, that looks really nice, actually. And now this computer never originally came with a design for... Windows sticker, so I'm not sure where I want to put this. Hmm. Maybe here. That looks pretty good. Okay, we can uh, finally conclude this video. I um, actually got this um, from Amazon a while ago. Um, this is a uh, other 2 gig uh, CF card. I'm going to experiment with um, Windows 95 on here because I've never really used Windows 95 on a 486 all that much, so I want to see uh, how well that'll run. So uh, I do plan to do a video about that, um, but we're not going to put it in this video because this video's gone on way too long. It took me eight days to make this video. Eight days! So uh, yeah, that will uh, be in a future video. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, journey with the Gateway 2000 4 DX266. I look forward to uh, playing around with this a little bit more. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.